11, time to start again with a very short break, sorry about this. Um, Carlos will now tell us about something that many people already have talked about for the last three days a lot, and I guess you all will be happy to hear more details about this. I'll try not to say it already. Okay, so, so I begin. I'm here for, for presenting you the third version of Paella. Okay, this is, well, I think this is the third version, so it's the third time I'm doing sort of this presentation. So for most, most of you know Paella, and some of you maybe you don't. So let me a brief introduction to the, to the end, and then I will pass to the new, new features and releases. Okay, this is Paella. Paella is an HTML5 player designed for Matterhorn. We did it at Universidad Politecnica de Valencia because we like, we like, we, we thought in, in doing that. And I think the most distinct feature of Paella, which is the most distinct feature of Matterhorn, is the dual stream play. So, you are really playing two streams of video. It's not one. If you have to play one, you can go with video GS, you can go with many, with flow player, with many things, but if you want to play two videos, two, two streams at once, you have a restricted set, and one of them is Paella. The other ability that Paella have is the ability to manage media packages. Matterhorn talks media packages, and you have to understand media packages to be able to play. So, just for, for sorry. <coughs> Just for telling a few words about Paella, this is our new website, spayaplayer.pb.es. Hopefully, if you write Paella Player on Google, you're already here. And this is the embedded version of Paella. Paella 3 is, is able to embed, be embed, so we have it embedded on the, on the web page. You can use that as you thought it would use an, a video player. So we are managing dual streams, so we are able to change the position of the streams, the size, we can show one, we can hide the other. For instance, you can focus only on the slides, you can focus more on the slides than on the teacher, and you can have a full view trying to to see the blackboard as much as you can. That's the beauty of having dual stream. On the other hand, you have all the usual features, so you can jump by pressing on the, on the play bar, but also you can have the slide channel in which there are the slides that Matterhorn extracts, so you can navigate by those slides. By the way, there was a sort of a feature request, and an idea from from Judy that is when you sorry I, I will change the viewpoint to see it more clearly so when you navigate by the slides then you can browse the actual slides before jumping to the point so it's it's quite nice just for that uh, also you can Sorry, I, I will hide this. You can share on Twitter and Facebook. You can have sorry, the footprints of the people that has been using that. It's the same as in Matterhorn. Uh, you can go for all screen if you browse and support that. This reloads, by the way. So I shouldn't. Okay. And... Another thing we can we can manage is to change the the view mode to to put on all the tools of Matterhorn. So to do that, I am here. This is not this is not working inside of the embed by design. So I go for the demo site. You have we, here we have a lot of recordings. I choose one of them. It's open here. So. 
Here you can change the view mode. So you change for, from the full video size to the um, many toolbars around. Uh, I, uh, we released the version of Paya uh, last week and we have found our first bikes and we have one which is pretty, pretty annoying with the language. Paya is, Paya is designed in, in English, we write in English and then we have a Spanish translation. Uh, so by, by some bug we have to kill, in my Spanish browser put in English, some things appear in Spanish, so sorry for that. So here you have search, Busqueda, by the way, is the search from Matterhorn. You, have, you can download the video if this is allowed. You have the comments, you can find the comments about this lecture. This is the related videos. I think it's, well, it's more or less the things you may, you may think about in, in, in a player, okay? So let's, let's go on with the, ah, by the way, we also have captions. If I go for the side, uh, the number of the, um, of buttons and the position of buttons is depending on the capabilities of the video, of the media package. So, for instance, if you want to see captions, you need to go for a video that has captions. For instance, this one, this is a single video with captions, so you have captions. Yeah, this, this is the captions. Okay, I'll stop. Okay, so what's new in the, in the new release of Paella? We have several new features. The first one is now Paella is compatible with iPad and Android 4.x. This is one thing that many people were asking for or many of our students were asking for. We have work on, on, the, on the skins. Now it's easier to change colors and, and and the, the aspect of paella and remove the logo. So we, we will work more on that, but now we have making some changes on that. Now we have multiple quality video support. So in the media package, you have several resolutions of your video. You can, paella adapts on starting on the best one. And if not, you can change. I have a slide about that after. We'll, we also have made an integration with non-Matterhorn servers. That is because we have a lot of content that don't, uh, that don't was on Matterhorn. And we didn't feel necessary to pass everything around for, by Matterhorn. So we have made a, a support for Paya to be able to play Matterhorn and non-Matterhorn content. We have worked with SUSIB quite successfully and they have helped us to in, in usability, now we have area tags and tooltips. So if you use voiceover or a, or a screen reader, Paya will support that. Also, and some minor features. Now you can download the video files I've shown, I've shown to you. There's a login logout button. And we have two, I say experimental while they are working because this is something I feel we have to work more on. We have a video export feature for allowing our teachers to export child videos from a, from a master video. This is one feature one our teachers demand us. And we have the comments feature that is fully working, but I think it should be, um, it should be review how it works. I don't feel this is the best wo way to work with comments uh, up, to, up to now. More things for maybe you know, most of you know, but Paya works with HTML5 video, 
but also with RTMP videos and flash video. So in the config, in the config file, for you select with what mean of delivery you are, you are allowed to do and the order. So for instance, in this case, first Paya will try to do streaming. If it's not working, it will try to play with HTML5 and then we will, we will use a flash player that is embedded to play. It's, it's up to you. Yeah? Uh, so streaming on iOS? <laughs> streaming on iOS? Streaming on iOS. I have, so, a, I, I, I have a small slide on that. Okay. And I, we have a, a new session for, in the next session, we, we will talk a lot of, of that. Okay. The, the short answer is not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, well, also Paya selects the, provided that, Paya selects the best way to make the, the actual delivery. So this is something that has got some problems in the past because browsers changed the way to, del to deliver and the support of playing methods and so. For instance, we have now issues with Mac OS plus Firefox plus some MP4 files, not, not all MP4 files. If you have such a combination, uh, the browser tell Paya that it's able to play, but really it's not able to play, something like that. We have issues with that, but we are working on. We have also some, some issues with Flash on Linux. Sometimes it's working, sometimes not. Okay, for the compatibility with iPad and Android. Uh, as I was saying, we will talk I think uh, a lot of time about that in the next session. But by the way, the short story is that on iPad and Android, you can't play two videos at the same time in a web page. It's forbidden by design. In fact, we, fo we found a way to do that, and Apple could that <laughs> in the next release because it's forbidden by design. So what we have done is, is that in, in Paella, what we have is two video containers. Each video container has a player inside. That player could be the Flash player for RTMP or the HTML5 player for, for playing HTML5 way. Okay, so we have defined a new kind of player that is the image carousel player, which is passing the slides. So when you enter with an iPad, it selects automatically for the video container two for the slide container, the image carousel uh, player. So in fact, you are only playing one video and the other is as slides passing synchronously as time passes as, as, it, as it works. The slides are got from the slide channel from, from Matterhorn. By the way, this is another reason for having a high resolution slide channel in Matterhorn. You have to change that. This is working pretty well. And if for most of our lectures, if I don't tell the trick, people don't notice. Believe me. <laughs> OK. Also, the, we have the multiple quality video support. So in your media package, you can have several encodings of your video. You can see several resolutions and several bit rates. This, um, this is something uh, we have thought a lot from our yeah, usability perspective, from the user's perspective, and we don't have a clear decision on that. But by the moment, what we are doing is, if you have several resolutions, for instance, you have your video encoded in size one and size two, and your video window is something like that, Paya selects the most closer resolution to that. It's not, the, it's not a, um, a floor on a sale, or a sale, but the most closest. So for instance, in this size, we will play in video one, in, si in size one. If it, if it would fit, I think something like that, it will play in size two. Anyway, in the in the player, in the player, 
if you have several resolutions, okay, you have a button here for choosing the resolution for the presenter and the slides. You can choose what for each of them. Okay, why I, I was telling that is, this is something we have to think on. Because um, one thing that could help a lot the player to take decisions is maybe to have the, the resolutions in the media package tagged as high, low, medium, or something like that. So we can display the user, I want high, I want low, I want medium, or I want I don't know what. Because we only, from the player point of view, we only view a list of resolutions. And we don't know what resolution to choose, why, for any, for any reason. So this is something that, from the player side, is prepared to, to do whatever we want to do, but we're not sure what to do up to that. Okay, by the moment, this is working as, as such. So. Upon starting, if there are several resolution, Paya will select the closest resolution to the window size. This is very good for embedding. If you embed on a web page, you will select the small resolution. So you are not wasting your valuable one bandwidth and the user's bandwidth. <coughs> About the integration of non-Matterhorn servers, now there's a layer between Paya and and Matterhorn, there's an internal layer inside. So the idea is, Paella knows about what is a master video, a secondary video, a slice, blah, 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 blah. And there, there's a function, it's called Matterhorn.js, that knows how to retrieve everything from Matterhorn. Well, this is separate. This is separate because now we can write functions for bringing those content from, from legacy servers. For instance, if you have a bare web server with a presenter video, a presentation video, just two, now, provided you make that GS, that, that adapter GS, you can play that in, into Paella with a restricted quality and so on, but you can add your legacy content for that. We will use that for all our legacy content in such a way. <coughs> okay, the video export. I think this is much better if I show you the video export and the editor. Okay. Uh, this is no, not my laptop. Uh, function what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess. Yeah, this is working already. Okay. This, um, I'm going from the editor features. Paella includes a soft editing feature because um, we operate Matterhorn in a different way from some of you. So we record, then we upload to, the, to, to Matterhorn, and, that, and we send a link to the teacher with, a, with an email for the teacher to review the recording. So the content is published but hidden, and then teacher can edit that and give the final okay. The final okay. But he has passed all the Matterhorn pipeline after that, and we make soft editing. So for doing the things, we have an editor that is integrated into Paella. This is the editor. Okay. So don't let there's a lot of, of, of buttons there, but from it's sort of a, a simple video editor while there are many things on and we are putting more things on. First of all, teachers can select the start and the end. Is that recorte? Sorry for the English translation again. So the teacher, sorry. Ah, sorry, select the tool, okay. So the teacher 
can select the start and the beginning of the, <coughs> of the lecture. For helping the teacher, we have put here um, a timeline of the slides. So for most of the recordings, yeah, the first slide is, is always black, and the recording starts with the first slide. So for the teacher, it's much easier to go here and begin something like that. It's much easier to find out. So this is the, the trimming feature called Recorte. Then we have breaks, descansos. Hey, this is on a Spanish course, by the way. So this is the, the breaks. So you can put a break, and whenever you are, I think, here in a break. OK. You're in a break. Uh, why, why am I not positioning? OK. When you're in a break, the, the screen gets with a sign is you are in a break. And when it's playing and arrives to a start of a, a break, jumps to the end of a break. OK. I wanted to talk about the, also the, the video export. No, so we want the teachers to be able to make short clips from long clips. So they have the lectures, and they want to export part of them. We have identified two different use cases. One is, I want a short part of my recording. And the other one is something like a conference. I have several speakers. I want to make several clips for several speakers for the teacher. So we have a feature called single video export, exportar un video, and multiple video export, multiple video export. So when you select that, then you have two new, uh, two new layers. This green is the single video export. So I am selecting from here to here the lecture, plus this one. You can select several parts of the recording to be exported. I put create, I create a new asset, and you can do that. So you are exporting those parts. Then you fill out the data we need for the, <coughs> the data we need for making the actual exporting, basically the title, the, the title, the, the teacher, and the series we want to put it after making the exporting in Matterhorn. And then I, we, we are doing an annotation in the annotation service. Okay? So we have an annotation telling Matterhorn what could be done. This annotation, by the way, now is in JSON, but it can be in SMIL, as, as we talk in Rudiger, it's, it's no problem with that. And there should be a separate process for ingesting again. Why is this necessary? Because the player is talking to the engaged server. It's not talking to the ingest. Okay, you know that. So you can make ingest from the player. Even we don't want that, because I want teachers to make uh, content, but I don't want to have a lot of unnoticed coutons and, uh, and encodings and so on. So there should be a separate process taking those annotations, taking the videos to be processed, and making a queue and ingesting at appropriate times to Matterhorn. We have a, now we have a quick script to do that, that is working, by the way, but um, we want, after the, the conference or something like that, to think on, for instance, the trimming service. We can call a workflow with the SMIL file and use the standard trimming service, or making that script more configurable or something like that. I, what I have to say is that the... The player part is ready, he's working, and we are going to test that with our homemade script for our teachers. And then we will provide a suitable solution, I think, in the next conference for that. Okay, for the multiple video export, it's something like that. So you go for 
exportar múltiples vídeos, and then it's video one, and video two, and video, it should be video three, I don't know what's video one, but each video has its own metadata. So this is presentation one, presentation two, presentation three, yeah, what? Four minutes, right. Okay. And yeah, that's also about the video export. Okay. I think it's nearly, oh, what's that? It's nearly all. Okay. Well, about the skinning, we have joined all that we have been able to join in a master CSS, so it's quite easy to, to skin. I don't have much more about that. About localization, now, by, yes, by design in English, we have a translation in Spanish. We have found some bugs on that, but anyway, it's translated. There's not too much text on paella, I have to say, but if you want to localize paella, it's quite easy to do that. So if you go uh, to the paella website and go to GitHub, oh, sorry. Why? Okay, I don't know why. Okay, you go to GitHub, there's a dictionary.esjson, dictionary.enjson. For instance, I want to tell the ES. So here you have all the, all the strings in paella. I think it's about 30 strings. So you want to have paella in in English or in, in German or Finnish or something like that, feel free to make the translation and, and we will put on. It's not, it's not too much. It's, I, I feel it quite easy to, to translate. No, 40, 50. Okay. Again. My last slide, plans for the new version. What we will do from now on next? First, kill some bugs. Then we are running OpenEDX. We are very happy with the video player that ships with OpenEDX. So we are going to put Paella into OpenEDX. Then we will look more closely to mobile devices. Okay, uh, we will talk more about the session, but there are many things that can be done there. And many users wanting us to do many things on that. We will add multiple captions in multiple languages. It's quite easy. So as we will have translations in the, sub in the captions button, you will have several languages and you can choose from. We have a, a work in progress with one university in Spain about uh, adding interactivity to the player. In fact, that when you are playing, sometimes it gets a question, so you have to solve. They want to have like a mean for the, the students to get involved. We are working on that, and it's working as, as a demo, uh, as, a demo as, a, as an alpha version. I think if it's quite easy to do. And finally, we will work on the video export feature, plus all the things you suggest and we can find useful. And that's all. Thanks for your time. Hi, thank you for that. Um, is the export, would that be a hard edit then when you export the clip? and you in, ingest it, would it transcode and, and chop yeah. the video to that bit? So, yeah, no, the, the export is, is, is meant to make hard editing, yeah. So, but mm, we don't feel happy with making hard editing to something that has been passed by, by that, that has passed the Matterhorn pipeline. So, for us, in the, in the way we think is that all operations make childs. So the master copy will be always. And then you make childs, and you can make childs of the childs, and anyway, 
and you are adding content, but you never lose the first one, the master one. So, yeah. So, yeah. So when you, uh... so if you were playing the um, a processed, exported video, would you like in the background really have the full video, or, I mean, uh, when you're streaming, it would it would only display the part that you want to see, but no, or would uh, only stream the the segment. Uh... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but anyway, uh, I have a media package. That is, this is, has been recorded, all the media package. My teacher want, want to hard code that media package. What we are doing is creating a new media package, a second one. So now we have, in Matterhorn, we have two different media packages. One is full, and the other one is hard trimmed to the size. So uh, in, at that point, uh, if the teacher don't want the first recording to be online, can unpublish that. So this is, is hidden, but it's, also, it's, it's already on the system. And we feel this is much easier for the teacher to, to work on. So for instance, uh, if you have seen, you can choose the series while sporting. Why? Because I feel uh, I, uh, a good way to do is that all my recordings go to my private series. So I get all my recordings in my private series. Then I can choose to pass the recording from private to public, but also I can trim and cut and make some parts available in public series. So I think it's, it's the workflow we're thinking on. Yeah, it's the it's idea. Anything else? Have you thought about integrating a highly requested feature uh, that is faster playback? <laughs> faster playback, yeah. Uh, well, faster playback is supported by some browsers and some not. Okay, so uh, Paya now supports faster playback. There's inside in the API, there's the option to do that. But as far as um, we haven't, we are not comfortable, we have some browsers doing that and some browsers do not, we haven't put it online. It's not exposed in a, in a, in a, in a button. Could do that. Also, by the way, uh, there's a problem with the audio pitch. You have faster playback, but if you want to do it cleanly, you also have to uh, modify the audio pitch because when you speed up, you get a or something like that. So you can manage that with socks or with, any, with other tools and correct that audio pitch. But then you have a second audio, uh, audio channel and you have to manage that. Mm, I think that, that could be thinking on, but it's not only a, a matter of the player, uh, is the, what I have to say. I guess. For doing that, first we have to modify the more workflow in Matterhorn to have several audio tracks, and then it should work something like the the, the multiple resolution tool. So you select what audio track are you are you are playing. Uh, just a question about from others who you know the YouTube feature about that I've tested it once, but do they adjust the pitch? Or is it just a faster playback speed? Uh, they adjust the. I mean, it's it it's faster playback speed, and the pitches sounds normal. I think. Normal. Yeah. You so don't hear it high. I mean. Okay. It changes the pitch. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. But but I I guess that is do, that is done offline. I don't think it's done offline. I not, would I'm not, not sure suppose how they that they it. create separate. So probably you can do this in a JavaScript media pipeline. Maybe. So we both can have maybe, a maybe, this problem. Maybe we, we can think on that. You're right. Sir, did you? Oh. Okay. So we can just continue to the next session. Okay. We have not um, um, coordinated too much, but from my point of view, I simply would start with questions and uh, comments from the audience before we start with a presentation that Carlos has prepared about what are the expectations about going mobile with uh, lecture recordings. Um